You're watching KOMU TV 8, Columbia, Jefferson City. And now, live, Mid-Missouri's news team. Angela Buck, Randy Wright, and Brian Nooner. This is News Center 8 at 10. Good evening, everyone. I'm Angela Buck. And I'm Sonia Due. Thank you for joining us for our late edition of News Center 8, Decision 92. Some Missouri politicians are one step closer to victory tonight. We begin our election coverage with the governor's race. First, a look at the numbers on the Republican side. Looks like William Webster is still holding out as the top one, 75,000 votes here. That is 1,923 out of 4,400. Now let's go to the capital city, if we can, where New Center 8's Michael Schwartz is standing by at William Webster's headquarters. Michael? Well, Sonia, the excitement is building here at Roy Blunt's headquarters in Jefferson City. As you can see, even though Blunt is in the second place spot, the excitement is still going on here. The gap between Webster and Blunt has decreased to a 3% gap. Supporters here say although it's been an uphill battle, they're confident that Roy Blunt is catching up and will emerge as tonight's winner. Roy Blunt has not shown up here, but that hasn't stopped the crowd from getting ready to welcome him. Campaign officials say there are still a few counties left, and they're not giving up hope. Reporting live from Roy Blunt headquarters, I'm Nancy Pasternak. And that was Nancy Pasternak. We will now go to William Webster's headquarters, where Michael Schwartz is standing by live. Michael? Angela, they say the only poll that counts is the poll that's taken on Election Day. Well, Bill Webster must certainly be trying to count his blessings right now as he tries to eke out a lead over Secretary of State Roy Blunt. It's a slim lead, yes, but a lead it is. With the polls results still coming in, it looks like 45% just about for the Attorney General and 40% for close rival Roy Blunt, with Wendell Bailey a distant third. Joining me now is Attorney General Bill Webster. And Bill, we've seen the lead that you had over the last couple months almost evaporate as we come close to Election Day. Did the negative campaigning hurt you? Oh, I'm sure some of it did. And we made a decision early that we were going to try and focus in on issues like welfare reform, jobs, consumer protection, the environment, health care. And unfortunately, some of our opponents uh, ran very negative campaigns. We finally responded uh, to defend ourselves, but we always felt it was going to be close. Those early polls were taken at a time when our opponents weren't on television, and we were. Uh, and when you have three well-known statewide candidates, we always felt it would tighten up some. Uh, uh, the, I think the polls towards the end showed it would be close. We felt it's close, and it is close. But the trends are all encouraging, whether it's in mid-Missouri, St. Louis, southwest Missouri. Uh, they're all very positive. Okay, thank you, Bill. That's Bill Webster, who's trying to hold on to a lead right now over Secretary of State Roy Blunt. Reporting live from the Capitol Plaza Hotel, I'm Michael Schwartz for News Center 8. Angela? Thank you, Michael. Now let's take a look at some of the lesser-known candidates who ran for the Republican race for governor. Let's take a look at some of those results. Roy Blunt, uh, let's see, William, what, these aren't lesser-known. <laughs> well, you can see, though, Dwight Watts getting only 2,000 votes and Fred Salmons only 1,500 votes. Of course, we, we didn't hear much at all from those candidates, but we did hear from William Webster, a lot of campaign advertising, some 75,000 votes for Webster. And Roy Blunt, of course, uh, running second there with 69,000. That's true. Well, let's go to Wendell Bailey's headquarter in Jefferson City. For News Center 8's Chris Miller is standing by live. Chris? Oh. <laughs> it, was, it was great. It was great. Thank you. I hope. I was. I was watching. I was like, oh shit. These drafts is gonna kill me tomorrow morning. Oh. Bailey is on his That's way okay. here right now from St. Louis, but with me is Sue Norfleet, the press secretary at the state treasurer's office. Um, you and Wendell Bailey have pretty much steered clear of the television mudslinging. Do you have any regrets about about staying clean in this campaign? Um, none whatsoever. The Wendell Bailey campaign, the whole organization, and Mr. Bailey are all very proud of the kind of campaign that we ran. Um, our commercials on TV stayed very positive and very much on the issues. Good. And also, I wanted to ask you, where will Wendell, Wendell, when, where will Wendell Bailey go from here should he lose this election? Well, um, our whole focus has always been to August 4 and then to the general election. Uh, Mr. Bailey's not really discussed that with any of the staff members, but with Wendell, Missouri is number one, and I'm sure he'll always be working to help the state of Missouri. 
Thank you, Sue. Instead of mourning their losses, supporters here will be celebrating their clean campaigning, but obviously this time, staying clean just wasn't enough. Reporting live from Wendell Bailey's campaign, I'm Chris Miller. Thank you, Chris. The race for the Democratic nomination for Lieutenant Governor culminated in a big win. Current State Senator Roger Wilson came out the winner. He had 132 32,000 votes, and Mary Ross came in second. That's a 1,923 out of 4,400. Wilson's win was much stronger than expected. I'm not sure what percentage is in right now, but against the rest of the field, we've got 50%. That's a, that's, that's a great omen, and our campaign crew has already started to work. Now, on the Republican side, current auditor Margaret Kelly is the apparent winner. Mm -hmm. The man who will represent the Democrats in the November election, Mel Carnahan. Let's go to News Center 8's Chris Crowley, who's in the midst of victory celebrations at Carnahan headquarters in Kansas City. Chris? Apparently having some audio difficulties there. We'll try and get back to that race in just a few minutes. Well, the race for Attorney General has been a heated one with plenty of mudslinging from the Republicans. And it seems to have paid off for David Steelman. Look at those numbers. 114,000 votes against John Hall's 76,000 votes. And Steelman will face the Democratic winner. That was Bob Holden, 107,000 votes. And the state treasurer, Democrat, 107,000 votes for Bob Holden. And Robert Quinn is leading the pack of Democrats running for Secretary of State. As for the Republicans, John Hancock beat out his competitors. What we're looking at right now, of course, Robert Quinn's number. There we have the Secretary of State for the Republican side. We've got Richard Struckhoff coming in second, but John Hancock way in the lead with 72,000 votes. And for state treasurer on the Republican side, 65,000 for Gary Melton. That is 100. That's 1,588 out of 4,400 precincts. Still a lot to be counted there. Mm-hmm. Let's look at the Depu uh, Democratic side. We can see Bob Holden in the lead with 107,000 votes to Jim LePage's 66,000 votes. Jerry Welch with 39,000 votes. And moving on to the results in the contest for United States Senator, Republican incumbent Christopher Bond has won by a landslide. Opponent Wes Hummel only got 16% of the vote. A win for Bond in November would mean a second term in Washington. In the Democratic runoff, Jerry Rothman Surratt was the convincing winner. And of course, the man who will represent the Democrats in the November election is Mel Carnahan. Let's try and go back to News Center 8's Chris Crowley, who is standing by live. Chris? Thanks, Angela. Excitement is in the air here at the Kansas City Adams Mark Hotel, where just hours ago, Mel Carnahan learned that he will be Missouri's next Democratic nominee for the office of governor. And ironically, the final vote tally in the Democratic primary really doesn't matter, because just hours ago, Vince Shamel dropped out of the race. And standing by with me now is Mel Carnahan. Mr. Carnahan, what was your initial reaction when your Democratic counterpart dropped out of the race? Well, I was shocked that he conceded quite so early. Uh, I had only heard one return. It was a good one, but it wasn't enough to uh, speak to the whole race. Uh, I haven't heard many returns yet, but I understand they're very strong. Right. And earlier in your victory speech, you said that Jefferson City needs a change. What was that change that you're talking about? Well, we've got to have a change from the do-nothing government of the Ashcroft administration. The Republican years have let us down. We need a government that fights for education, for jobs, and better management of state government. I'm going to fight for all three of those issues. This election will be a referendum on the Ashcroft years, and I believe I know what the people want. They want a change from those years. And uh, thank you, Mr. Carnahan. Thank you. And again, and again, Angela, Mel Carnahan is the next Democratic nominee for the office of governor. And now as the Democratic primary comes to an end, what prove, will prove to be a very interesting and exciting race for the governor's mansion is now begun. Reporting live, Chris Crowley, News Center 8, Kansas City, and back to you, Angela. Thank you, Chris. Now back to the governor's race. The Republican race was closed. Three candidates had a reasonable chance of winning, but surprisingly, the Democratic contest was almost no contest. Two hours after the polls closed, St. Louis Mayor Vincent Shamel conceded. Let's take a look at the numbers now. Well, let's not. News Center 8's Keisha McClellan is standing by at Shamel's headquarters. Keisha. A little before 9 tonight, Mayor Vince Shamel conceded the Democratic governor's race to Mel Carnahan. I have Mayor Shamel with me live. 
Mary Shamo, what do you think? Ha what do you think happened? Well, I think at the end, people made a choice in leadership styles. I presented myself as a controversial, upfront leader who would make hard decisions. And Mel Carnahan's record is uh, eight years as a statewide office holder, four years in the legislature, I think came down at the end more appealing to people. And that's a legitimate comparison. I felt in this year of Ross Perot, in this year in which people were asking for change, that people might be willing to accept a more a more aggressive style of leader. And in, at the end of the day, they decided not to. So our job now is to go elect Mel Carnahan governor. You know, now, now, will you support, support him? Oh, 100%. Let me make it very, very clear. The Democratic Party is a party of principles, not of personalities. Mel Carnahan and I share very similar views on education, on health care, on jobs. I wish I was the Demo Democratic nominee. I'm disappointed that I'm not. But the fact is, is that Mel Carnahan's a good man. He, he understands the needs of this state on those key issues. And I'm going to do everything I can to see to it that he becomes the next governor of this state. Okay, thank you, Mayor Shamel. That's Mayor Shamel. We're reporting live. Keisha McClellan in St. Louis. Thank you, Keisha. In the congressional races, first the 4th District for the Democrats. Looks like Ike Skelton won 32,000 votes there for the 4th Congressional District. In the Republican race, we can see Ierly behind John Carley. Carley with 13,000 votes, Ierly with only 8,000. And for the 6th Congressional District, the Democratic side, we have Patsy Donner, 19,000 votes there for her. And on the Democratic side in the 6th Congressional District, we see John Gallagher with the lead with 291 votes, Gene Simmons with 128, and Don Pine only coming in with 63. Once again, though, that's only 63 of 536 precincts reporting. Lots of room there. 8th Congressional District, Republican side. Looks like Bill Emerson is, the, is coming out pretty much ahead of, of Earl Durnell. That is 11 out of 512. Again, a lot of room there. And on the Democratic side, Tad Bullock with 286 votes. James Thompson trailing by only a bit with 239. Johnny Dover, it looks like he's definitely out of the race with only 98 votes. Well, two constitutional amendments having to do with education funding got mixed results at the polls this evening. Amendment 7, which would have allowed school boards to establish a tax rate of up to $6 with approval by a simple majority, failed soundly. And the Missouri School Board backed Amendment 7 and is disheartened. Right, I think that, that kind of goes with saying when you're working for something, we're certainly real, real disappointed. I think uh, Amendment 7 had, had the opportunity to provide a uh, funding for schools on a local basis, and obviously that, that opportunity is not going to be there now. What do you think? Last year. The other amendment regarding education funding is Amendment 11. It earmarks future proceeds from the Missouri Lottery for schools. That measure easily passed. Other constitutional amendments up for voter approval included Amendment Number 5, a measure that would allow cities to increase bonds. We can see there a no vote, 65,000 votes on Amendment Number 5. As for Amendment Number Eight, the motor fuels tax revenue, it has been approved at 73,857 votes. And finally, Amendment Number Nine, calling for a commercial property surtax. We can see that yes, an approval, 62,000 votes. Democrat Joe Mosley is ahead in the 19th District State Senate race. The Boone County prosecutor is winning over David Rathnell. Mosley is quick to point out name recognition isn't the only thing that helped him win tonight. What made the difference is we had an awful lot of people working and helping us, uh, particularly here in Boone County, and, and those are the people that are here tonight. Uh, we wanted to have them come and celebrate with us and thank them for the job they've done, and they worked hard a lot. In the state Senate race for the 21st district, district, let's take a look at those numbers. State Senator District, that is the Democratic side, 21st District, it looks as the, well, actually, we don't have numbers for that. Let's go on. And we have the results from four state representative races in the 19th district. If we can take a look at that, we see Charles Rednecker, 46 votes compared to Ruth Bones, 24. In the 19th district, we see Charles Norwald with 68 votes, Ray Fisher with only 27 on the Republican side, the 19th district. In the 22nd district, Steve Gaw, the apparent winner, with 155 votes. Of course, that's only one precinct of 27, so still need some votes there before we can declare any winner in those races. 
And we don't seem to have any votes in for the state representative Democratic side, the 24th district. And still to come, counting county commission votes, but first a check of the school ballot. Stay with us. The Oldsmobile Achiever, the car that outperformed Honda Accord and Toyota Camry in total cost in a 100,000-mile real-world independent test. Achiever, a Consumer's Digest Best Buy, available at 3.9 for 48 months during Oldsmobile Smart Choice Celebration. So if you really want to run for your money, you have to look further than Accord and Camry. You have to look at Achiever. Rick Ball, Landmark Olds, Carol Rima, Riley Estes Olds, Pearl Motor Company, Kelly Motors, Legend Olds, David Malmo, Forrest Olds, and Ren Olds. from specially marked packages of Mountain Dew. Trade them in for these great prizes and get vertical. We continue our election coverage with a look at some of the county races. In Boone County, we have results from commission's races in two districts. In Boone County Commissioner District 1, it looks like John Williamson Jr. is winning that one with 486 votes. That's 15 out of 67 precincts reporting. We see for, on the Democratic side, Karen Miller with the lead with 671 votes. And Boone County Commissioner, District Number 2, we ha see Linda Volk wording that with 691. We also see here Rodney Smith with 385 votes. District 2 on the Republican side. Cole County Sheriff, it looks like John Haymeyer's winning that one. 2,942 votes. That's 20 out of 39 precincts reporting. Cole County Commissioner, Western District, it looks like David uh, Brzezindani, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, has, seven, has four, 75 votes. That's just one out of 39 precincts reporting, though. Still a lot of room in that one. And William Voss with 28 votes. Art Earhart with 56. The Cole County Commissioner, Republican Western District. And we see the Cole County Commission of Republican Eastern District, Tony Heisenberger, behind Robert Gratz with 266 votes. And in the commissioner's races in Cole County in the Western Districts, rather, I think we've already gone through that. So, <laughs> up next, Randy will tell us if more mild weather is in store. But first, to look at how other local county candidates are faring. Stay with us. career. At O'Hara Travel School, you'll receive the professional training necessary for entry into one of today's fastest growing industries. Travel. Evening classes start soon at the Columbia Regional Airport. Call O'Hara Travel School in Jefferson City or call 1-800-800-3151. Warm or dangerous? What level of ultraviolet rays can you take before it becomes hazardous to your health? Well, throughout the summer at noon, 6 and 10, we'll bring you the SunSource scale. It's measurements of harmful ultraviolet rays so you can, with your SunSource sun guide, enjoy your summer and minimize the dangers of UV exposure. Be sure to pick up your SunSource sun guide at any of the area Wendy's or Columbia Regional Hospital and enjoy your summer activities safely with KOMU TV8. 
Randy writes here with our election weather. <laughs> Why don't you guys take it easy for a couple of minutes? <laughs> I'd like to. Thank you. We'll take care of a little weather, although a lot of the races are pretty hot today. Our uh, temperatures remain quite cool, and the good news is tomorrow, another very mild day for the first week in August. Right now, skies are partly cloudy in the Columbia Jeff City area. 64 degrees, humidity 78 percent. Our pressure on a rise at 30.09 northeast wind at 8 miles per hour. Our high temperature today, 81, 58 or morning low. Those temperatures averaged out about 8 or 9 degrees below north Normal 108 and 44 are records for this state. No rainfall today, so our yearly total remains the same. A sun so reading with a good deal of sunshine, as you might expect, it was quite high. An ultraviolet high of 82. Live look at Doppler aid radar for you, 150 mile sweep, detailing no precipitation in the Show Me State. Our temperatures across the TV8 viewing area tonight, all very comfortable. 69 and partly cloudy at the lake, 64 degrees in Moberly and Rollo reporting mostly cloudy skies and 71 degrees. Our latest satellite shot showing a uh, large area of bright white cloudiness up to the northwest. That is a strong area of thunderstorms. In fact, severe thunderstorm watch area is still out for Nebraska, much of Kansas, and now a brand new watch area in Oklahoma. The thunderstorms forming all along a frontal system, and you can see on our radar composite the flashing areas, heaviest of thunderstorms, as close as about 200 to 250 miles just to our west. Slight chance for a little bit of rain as an upper air disturbance moves over the Show Me State late tonight and tomorrow. Our forecast in detail for all of mid-Missouri, mostly cloudy skies tonight. We may get an isolated shower late with a low temperature around 60. Then for the day tomorrow, again, a mostly cloudy sky, a slight chance for rain. High temperature, very comfortable for August. About 79 degrees and east wind at 10 to 15. Then for tomorrow night, rain moves out of the forecast as that disturbance moves on to the east. We'll drop to 62. Our extended forecast for the rest of this week. Temperatures should warm into the mid-80s by the end of the week. That is still below normal for August. So uh, now that you guys have had a chance to kind of recuperate a little bit, that's a nice cool forecast. <laughs> Thank you so much, Randy. Sure. Later, we'll update you on the rest of today's news. But stay with us for more local county election results. Hi, how you doing? Good to see you. Hi, ma'am. How you doing? Good to see you there, man. Well, hello there. How you doing? How you doing, bud? How you doing? How you doing? You treat people nice, they're going to treat you nice. Come on in, lady. Hi. <laughs> in mid-Missouri. Carpet values in Fulton is having the biggest sale of the year. The August 10th sale is going on now. Bring your truck, van, trailer, or 18-wheeler, because you will not leave without taking carpet with you. Cash carry, or make your own deal. Carpet will be reduced until it's all gone. We're so overstocked, we had to take it outside. Over 500 rolls of carpet have to be moved now. Absolutely rock-bottom prices. Dealers welcome. New merchandise arriving daily. The giant August 10th sale going on now. Carpet values in downtown Fulton. Don't miss this one. Almost 9,000 firefighters are battling wildfires in California, Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and Nevada. The flames have destroyed at least one house, but police report no injuries. About 300 soldiers based at Fort Hood left today for the Gulf. They're part of the maneuver known as Intrinsic Action, a joint effort with Kuwaiti forces. 2,000 soldiers are involved in the two-week exercise. A State Department spokesman is condemning the murders of two toddlers in Sarajevo. Serb forces fired on the bus fuel full of orphans yesterday as it left the war-torn country. This morning, snipers shot and wounded the baby's grandmother as she attended their funeral. Meanwhile, 40 other orphans have arrived safely in Germany. Well, coming up today, sports spotlights and more Decision 92 highlights. Stay with us.
Hi, I'm Don Brown, the Chevy Pontiac Cadillac dealer in Fulton. Right now, you can take advantage of these great summer deals. 92 Bonneville starting at $17,499. These are new cars, folks. Thinking about a pickup? 92 S10 pickups, not strippies, but loaded up, $89.95. Full-size conversion vans with 2300 cash back, $17,559. This great-looking 92 Geo Metro, only $59.25, $119 a month. 92 Cavaliers, $78.62, $154 a month. They are not under my lights at Don Brown and Fulton. Tonight, after News at 8, NBC continues its Olympic coverage from Barcelona. For the last time, name the secret ingredient that gives Diet Pepsi an unfair advantage. Uh-huh. Well, what is it? It's like this, baby. No, it's uh-huh, cause the taste says uh-huh, baby. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. You got the right one, baby. With 100% uh-huh. Back to local news. In the 9th Congressional District, Republican Richard Hardy is the clear winner. Hardy is a major opponent of PACs, political action committees, and is a strong supporter of term limitations. Hardy has already planned his campaign strategy for November. In the winning of primary, you have to appeal mainly to Republicans because I'm running on a Republican ticket. But we need to get those crossover votes. We need to let the, the Democrats know that there's a home for them uh, with Rick Hardy. Democrat Justice Griffin says he knew running for the 9th District Congressional race would not be easy. Our campaign has really been grassroots because running against an incumbent and filing late, we got kind of a slow start. But uh, last couple of months, uh, I've been going all over the district, and it's you know kind of one on one as well as speaking at every opportunity we had. Griffin is in second place, far behind Volkmer. Well, still to come, a recap of results from the major state races. But first, a final look at local county outcomes. over, when the rubble is sifted, when the broken dreams are cleared away. It's one of the worst disasters I have ever seen in my life. It was like a tidal wave that went through here and just crushed the houses here. Give thanks it didn't happen to you or yours. Then give thought to this. Right now, somewhere in America, the Red Cross is providing food, shelter, and emergency assistance for the men, women, and children who suddenly have to start all over again. The victims of the more than 54,000 disasters of every size that happen every year right here in America. You can help. Call 1-800-842-2200 today to give your support where it counts. Red Cross was just wonderful. I just couldn't have made it without them. Colombians are joining night out festivities to show solidarity against crime by turning on porch lights and spending the evening outdoors with neighbors. The community uh, neighborhood patrolman came by and had a sandwich and uh, the uh, sergeant came by and had a cup of coffee and McGruff came by and so we've had a big night. The message to burglars, we're watching for you. Tonight marks the third year for the Neighborhood Watch Program's Nationwide Night Out. And tonight's small town stopover takes us to a friendly town with a frightening name, Frankenstein. It's a town about 20 miles east of Jefferson City. And while the town often gets comments about its legendary name, News Center 8's Pat McReynolds reports the residents think it's all in good fun. 
Residents of Frankenstein accept the fact that the name of their town may overshadow some of its other splendors. In fact, they find it a novelty. We're so used to it, we don't, it don't bother us a bit. We're kind of proud of our little village. <laughs> you, so you don't have any big monsters walking around town? No. No, no not, castles up on the hill or anything? No, no, no. I wish we did. <laughs> no, that this Frankenstein was here before that monster was ever created. <laughs> but there are some inconveniences that they could do without. I'm glad our mailing address is out of Bonnet's Mill, so at least we don't have to write the long name Frankenstein in every envelope, which will help. And of course, over the years, the, the sign that you saw probably on the way in, it disappears from time to time. <laughs> so don't come here expecting a horror movie. Instead, you'll find a beautiful town with friendly people. Pat McReynolds, New Center 8, Frankenstein. And tomorrow, New Center 8 travels to the town of Taos. Help us out with the weather. What's going on? It's going to be very nice. Uh, actually, very, very quiet. Uh, unlike a lot of the political races that have been going on, uh, our forecast is very quaint. Tonight's partly cloudy skies. We may get a scattered shower late. The opportunity for rain will stay in our forecast through tomorrow. Temperatures very cool for this time of the year. High tomorrow, only around 79, so enjoy it. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at some final election results if we can, or at least the final numbers that we have. That with uh, 19,000 precincts reporting, we can see William Webster, the leader there, with 75,000 votes. Roy Blunt trailing 69,000. On the Democratic side, we have Mel Carnahan coming out with 166,038 votes. Uh, Vince Shamel had 99. Of course, he's already conceded the race to Mel Carnahan. And we see uh, here, we see Elmer Daffron with, uh, of course, only 1,800 votes. Of course, we didn't hear much at all about these people. We didn't see much advertising uh, from them whatsoever. Not a lot of mudslinging from them. <laughs> and, of course, these are not final results. And, of course, we see where that many more precincts must be reported. Mm -hmm. But it looks as if we do have some clear winners in Webster some of the races. and Carnahan looks like they're going to be battling it out mm -hmm. for governor. And we just uh, got word that Roy Blunt has conceded. So we'll be interesting come November. Yeah. Why don't you all look for uh, more continued election results tomorrow. And, of course, we'll have a full wrap-up at 6 and 11. Until then, enjoy Olympic coverage and have a good day tomorrow. Good night.